Lissa Productions. So when we're dealing with digital circuits, something else that's important is something which we call a clock, which in the case of digital circuits is basically a pulse chain of zero and five volts with some regular period. So from here to here, there's some period T, there's some frequency. So this is zero volts and five volts. And we push that into our digital circuits. And generally what happens is a chip will process something when a clock pulse is high, and it will hold it when a clock pulse is low. So it's you're basically every clock pulse, your circuit can do something. We could just use our function generator and turn out a, a clock chain here. But we're going to actually set it up with something which is known as the 555 chip, which is an integrated circuit. And this chip is based on an RC time constant. So we provide a couple of external resistors and a capacitor hooked up to this chip to define the period. So we have to build basically, we'll look at it here, there's some VCC comes in, there's an R1, an R2, that goes to ground, and a capacitor. And we take things out of here and out of here and put them into the 555 chip. We'll come and talk about that in a second. But so, and so given this, the period of this clock is going to be R1 plus 2R2 times the capacitance. It's an RC time. And it turns out that the time that the circuit is up is going to be T up, it's going to be R2C, and T down is going to be R1 plus R2C. So our job is to choose R1, R2, and C so that these aren't too far off. And we're going to pick a period to be one second. So that's part of your job, is to choose reasonable components for that. So you'll assume that we've selected these components here. And then what we will do is we will put these into the 555 chip. And in your textbook, you can see what's inside the 555 chip. So there are there's an IS and an IT, and these two inputs are strapped together. And those come from this one goes around, it goes into something called OD. You'll need to get the pins on this. There is a, an output clock here. It comes out. There is an R, which is connected to 5 volts. And there is a ground connection on this. You have to figure out what the pin numbers are on these and get it hooked up correctly. But you build your circuit with two resistors and a capacitor. You plug it into here. And out comes a clock pulse with a one second period. And we will build this clock, and we will use it then to drive the rest of the circuits that we're building in this lab. And it's good to set it to have a period of about one second. And you can get pretty darn close with the components that we have in the lab. The next flip-flop that we're going to talk about is known as a JK flip-flop. It has two inputs, J and K. And there's a place where we put the clock into here. So now you know we have to have a clock. And then two outputs, Q and Q bar. The JK flip-flop that we're going to be using in this lab is based on a 7473 chip. And so it's a 14-pin chip. A few things to make note of. VCC, 5 volts, has to be connected to pin 4. You have to ground pin 11. And then there's something called a clear, which we also have to put 5 volts to or the chip doesn't work. So we've got to make sure that those are hooked up here. It's a dual JK flip-flop, so there's actually two JKs in here. I showed one, so one J and one K and one Q, and the pins seem to be sort of random on here. Look at the pin out, you'll find another one as well. But you have to have five volts here and here and ground there for it to work. We're going to use one particular state of the JK flip-flop, um, and we won't worry about the rest of the truth table, but you can read about that in your textbook. That particular state has both J and K hooked high to 5 volts. 
when we're in this particular state here, every time the clock pulse goes high, the output of Q and Q bar flip. So if Q is high and Q bar is low, if we get a clock pulse, this one goes low and high. Next clock pulse, high and low. So basically what we do, we have a clock pulse coming in, and if we look at Q, every time, let's say the clock pulse goes high, if Q starts low, it goes. Next time it goes high, it goes low, and it goes over here and goes high. So the clock pulse comes in here. What's coming out of Q is a clock with twice the period, or half the frequency. So the JK flip-flop is used as a frequency divider here. It, it, the frequency goes to what half of what it was, the period doubles. We're going to be using it in that particular state. We can keep going with this. Let's, we can remove this chip now. We don't need it. And we can put this into another JK flip-flop. So J and K. And again, we want that state where both of these are 5 volts. And we're going to take this output and put it into the clock there. And then we're going to take our output there. That's going to basically take this. And it's only on the rising pulses we're going to get an output that's now this long. It doubles the period, cuts the frequency in half again. So and we're, going to, we're going to build this particular circuit. And we're going to look at the various outputs here. So we will put on an LED with, don't forget, the 220 ohm resistor. Here, we'll put an LED here, and we can put an LED on the input if we want as well. So every time that this counts twice, this one will count once. If this has to count four times, that one will count once, and so forth. If we look at this, it turns out it's a binary counter, and we'll see that as we build it. We're actually going to extend it to four of these JK flip-flops and make that work there. And we'll use that 555 clock chip that we set up as the input here. So we'll come back and take a look at this in a minute. The last thing we're going to be doing in this lab is building a shift register. In fact, it's already built for us in a chip. And a shift register is based on something called D flip-flops. D flip-flops have a data input and a clock. And every time the clock pulse goes high, whatever is on the data input is transferred to the output. So if there's a 1 here on the clock pulse, the 1 goes to the output. If there's a 0 here, the 0 goes to the output. A shift register is a series of these D flip-flops all tied together. So here we go, D. And they all have the same clock input, so they keep going. So every time the clock pulses, the input here is transferred to here, the Q here is transferred to there, and so forth. The data is just shifted through this thing. The chip that we're going to be using, the 74LS164, is an 8-bit, which means it has 8 D flip-flops in it. So there's 8 outputs, Q1, Q2, Q3, up to Q8. And a few things we need to note about when we're doing, using this, and I'm not going to do the pinout, you can find it in the book. VCC are 5 volts, ground, obvious connections. There's one other thing that we need to hold at 5 volts, which is called the MR bar, pin 9, and the clock goes into pin 8. And the rest of the pins on this 14-pin chip are the various outputs. And we will, as we've done before, put LEDs on these various outputs. And if we build the circuit correctly, those little LED, the lights will flash and sort of move across in a line if we do the right input. So now let's go and look and see what some of these circuits are going to look like. So what I have here is I've actually, this in green here, we've wired up the 555 chip. So there's our two resistors, our capacitor, and the LED with its 220 ohm resistor to ground to show the, the clock pulse. And that should have a one second period. I've also got it wired up because I'm going to have to feed it into two JK flip-flops. So there's the first one in yellow, the second one in blue, and the two outputs from the yellow one are here, the two outputs from the blue one are here. And I'll hook this up. And first thing you see is just the output of the clock is one second period flipping. And that's going into the first JK flip-flop. And it's output, next one, then next one, next one, next one, next one, over. So you can see this 
light sort of building up here. So let's look at it from the beginning. We'll get back. Everybody's off. That's a zero. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and back to zero. So that's the counting circuit. When you build this, you'll build the 555, make sure it works. Build a two-bit counter by hooking up one of these, and then add a second one. And you can see it does get very busy here. There's lots of connections to the five volts. There's lots of connections to ground. I've jumped across the middle here to try to take advantage of that. And you can see I've even brought this around here, the this signal around here, so I can use this bus as well to try to clean, clean things up. So that's the second and third part of this lab here. The last part of this lab is building the shift register. There's that shift register chip. And you can see eight LEDs coming out of here and all these crazy connections coming there. And here's our 555 clock with its one second period going into here. And we're actually using that clock. And then we're going to set an input here so that this reads the input from the switch when the clock is high and then moves it through these D registers. So let me just set an input. So I put one bit in, and now you can see it moving through the D registers in there. It's shifting along through the shift registers, and then it goes off the end. I can load a bit, another bit, have them move through. I can load a whole bunch of bits. But whatever the data is when this is on, it just shifts it right through. When it reaches the end, it shifts off. So that's the last part of this thing here, the shift register, and you should actually be able to watch the data scroll through that chip. How are these things used? They're actually sort of a delay circuit. If you put a digital signal in one end, it takes a certain amount of time for it to come out the other end. So it's a way of remembering the circuit for a certain number of clock pulses until you may need that input for something. But that's the last part of this. We load the bit, and it moves across through that circuit there, all on that one chip. So. Now we've talked about all of the component, all the, all the circuits that we're building in this lab, the counter circuit here working, the shift register, the RS flip-flop. They're kind of fun circuits to build, and they're, they're kind of cool to do. Now you can basically build circuits that make LEDs flash. This one here, you can see it counting up, as we've talked about before. Um, and they're complicated circuits. Again, a critical thing, we set up the clock circuit on one edge to preserve real estate so that we could put our two JK flip-flop chips and I've wired this so I had one chip with yellow and one chip with blue, so it was a little easier to see. You might or might not want to do that. But this is sort of the results of this lab. So go ahead and have some fun building these circuits.